In this video I'm comparing the performance of Premiere Pro with DaVinci Resolve. The system I'm using is the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. It has 16GB of RAM and the 1TB SSD. Let's start with Premiere Pro. First I want to test how long the programs take to launch. I restarted the Mac before and closed all other applications to see how long Premiere takes to boot up. It actually surprised me a little how long it took to launch Premiere after restarting the operating system. But most people don't do this often with their Macs, so this won't be a big deal. After about 33 seconds we see the project manager and we can select our project we want to work on. And after 40 seconds the timeline is running. Let's close Premiere and restart it again. This time the start window shows up way faster and the project manager is running after only 5 seconds. Launching the timeline took us only 10 seconds in total this time. Ok, let's see what Resolve has to offer. I restarted the operating system again and closed all other applications. Resolve start screen shows up way faster and the project manager appears after 15 seconds. It took me a little longer to select the project here, but the timeline is running after 22 seconds in this case. So let's do the restart test for DaVinci as well, and this time it's really fast. Project manager shows up after 5 seconds and the timeline is running after 8 seconds. The next thing I want to test is the timeline performance. By timeline performance, I mean the playback smoothness as well as the footage preview delay while scrubbing through the timeline. Here you can see some 5.4K H.265 25fps drone footage in a full HD timeline. The footage has no effects applied and the playback quality is set to full with high quality playback enabled. Next up, the same footage in a 3.8K UHD timeline. It runs a little less smooth but still ok in my opinion. And if I hit pause and then play again, it starts the playback without delay. So let's jump to the 5.4K timeline. At 5.4K, Premiere needs a moment to start a playback and show some drop frames here and there. And the playback seems not really smooth anymore. Still usable, but not that great. So let's see what happens if we insert some effects. Because in most cases you will need some kind of grading or limitry adjustment on your footage. In a full HD timeline a basic lumetry adjustment is no problem. Adding a text layer on top makes Premiere struggle for a second, but it still plays the footage smooth enough for my taste. In a 3.8K timeline, things are different. Adding a lumetry effect results in choppy playback and the footage looks like it was shot in a different frame rate. By toggling off the effect, we can see an instant improvement. And by toggling on the effect, it gets instantly worse. The additional text layer makes the playback worse, but removing the lumetry effect with the text layer applied results in a better performance. There are some moments where Premiere seems to deliver smooth playback, but the next moment it gets choppy again. Ok, now let's test the 5.4K timeline. Here we can see quite a big difference between the footage without effects and with the lumetry effect applied.
Adding the text layer makes Premiere struggle for a second, but in total it's not that much worse than with only the Lumetri effect applied. It kinda looks bad, but keep in mind that 5.4K footage is a lot to process. So let's check the playback with some 3.8K UHD footage. The Full HD timeline plays smooth even with the Lumetri effect and the text layer applied. Let's try the 3.8K timeline. It's a little worse than the Full HD timeline, but still ok I think. The 5.4K timeline is a lot worse, but way better than with the 5.4K footage. Ok, the next test is the timeline scrubbing performance, which is important if you work with pancake timelines or cherry pick timelines and you have to look through a lot of footage. I think in the full HD timeline the performance is quite good for this type of codec. In the 3.8K timeline there's a little more delay, but you would have no problems finding the right shots. For the 5.4K timeline it's almost the same and you probably wouldn't want to have a more responsive performance, unless you see the performance in DaVinci. But before we switch over to DaVinci, let's compare the scrubbing performance with the effects applied real quick. This is the Full HD timeline and this is the 5.4K timeline. Okay, that's enough with Premiere for now, let's jump over to DaVinci. We are starting with the playback performance of the same 5.4K footage in the Full HD timeline. First without any effects and then with the color adjustment and the text layer applied. And as you can see the playback is absolutely smooth. Even in the 3.8K timeline Resolve can handle the playback without any problems. And adding the color effect and the text layer does not make any difference. But what about the 5.4K timeline? In 5.4K the playback stays absolutely smooth. Even with the color effect and the text layer applied. And here is a quick comparison with the same settings in Premiere. In the timeline scrubbing test, Resolve shows a better performance as well. The responsiveness almost seems like this footage has intra-frame compression because Resolve loads the frames so fast. It only gets worse if you do bigger jumps in the timeline. In the 5.4K timeline it is noticeably worse but still impressive for this high resolution, heavy compressed footage. And as a final comparison I rendered the 5.4K timeline you just saw and these are the results. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.